The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book One, The Fall. Part Two, After. Chapter Eleven. Lots of fun, lots of fun, lots of fun, lots of fun. Ebbett's voice was echoing inside Tal's head, accompanied by a weird, really loud rushing noise. It was also incredibly cold and dark. For a few seconds, Tal thought that he was in the middle of an awful nightmare. Any moment now, he would wake up to the soft light of his sleeping chamber. But he was awake. He had taken Ebbett's advice. He had climbed the Red Tower, and he'd fallen off, right through the veil. In just a few seconds, he would hit the castle roofs, and that would... Suddenly, Tal realized that he wasn't falling down so much as sideways, like a feather blown on the wind. Something was also gripping him quite painfully around the chest and waist. Tal craned his head around, but couldn't see. It was absolutely black, the darkest he'd ever experienced. Dark so fearful that his hand automatically went to his sunstone. But it wasn't there. The chain was still around his neck, but the sunstone itself seemed to have gone. Desperately, Tal pulled at the chain, hoping that his fingers would find the sunstone. But the chain was caught, somehow. It wouldn't move. Tal tugged at it again, and light suddenly blossomed behind him. At the same time, there was a sound that Tal found unbelievably comforting, his shadow guard's warning hiss. He craned his head back again and saw that his shadow guard was gripping him. It had made four arms to hold him tight and a pair of very long, very thin wings. That was why he wasn't falling. He and the shadow guard were gliding on the wind. Tal laughed, a crazy laugh of relief. He was speeding away from the castle, carried by the wind, out into darkness. But he had his shadow guard, and he had his sunstone. He hoped. The laughter stopped as everything went black again. Tal clutched at his chain. It was still there. He tugged on it, and the shadow guard hissed. Tal tugged again, and the shadow guard hissed louder. Finally, Tal understood. The shadow guard must have formed around the sunstone, drawing every little bit of the stone's light to make itself as big and strong as it could. All shadows needed light to exist. Without the sunstone, the shadow guard would dissipate in this total darkness under the veil. There was a lot of snow. Cold, wet lumps kept hitting Tal in the face. He had become totally soaked by them. He remembered blacking out, but not for how long. By the feel of his frozen hands and face, it had been for quite a long time. He looked down. There was nothing to see but darkness, a dark so terrifying that Tal had to shut his eyes. It was better to pretend to be asleep than to look into a world without light. In fact, Tal thought, maybe he was dead. This was what happened after life. There wasn't anything outside the castle. He'd died and gone somewhere else. Perhaps he would fall forever. But he didn't feel like he was dead. He could feel his body, which was shivering with both cold and fear. He felt the shadow guard shift a little, try to flow around him to give him extra protection from the wind, but most of its shadow flesh was being used in the wings that kept him gliding. On and on they flew. Tal lost track of time, and all feeling in his face and hands. He opened his eyes every now and then, blinking against the onrush of snow and ice, blinking away his own frozen tears. But there was still no sign of light. Later, Tal was almost unconscious again and totally frozen. He thought he was going to die, and that this horrible flight through darkness and snow would never end. Then he saw it. A bright glow, somewhere ahead and below. The castle! Tal shouted, or tried to, but his lips were frozen together, and all that came out was a muffled cry. The shadow guard tilted its wings, and they turned toward the distant light. Surely it was the castle, Tal thought, not caring that the wind must have taken them away from his home. As far as he knew, there was nothing else in the whole dark world. It had to be the castle. But as they flew closer, he became puzzled his tired, frozen mind grappling with what he saw. The light was too small to be coming from the castle, too feeble. There should be hundreds of lights, thousands of lights. He was still wondering what it might be when the shadow guard suddenly hissed and flapped its wings in a frenzy, desperately trying to slow them down. 
Three very long seconds later, Tal and his winged shadow guard plowed into the side of a hill, snow spraying out in all directions as they bored into a deep, wet drift. <laughs>